welcome to our review of uh, the bones of the upper limb. We are going to start first with our clavicle. As you will see here, we have an S-shaped bone um, that has an anterior curvature and posterior curvature. The anterior curvature will be towards your medial end. The posterior curvature will be towards your lateral end. You will realize that the lateral end is flatter that we will call a chromial end. Um, on the other side, uh, you will see that the medial end is fairly thick. That is your sternal end. That is your sternal end having here the sternal facet. If I am to flip the clavicle to show the inferior structures, you will see here um, we have a tubercle close to the acromial end. That tubercle is your conoid tubercle and from that point you will see a roughening that looks like a line or a ridge in the bone that would be your trapezoid line it's this one let me try to focus that is your trapezoid line over here that is your conoid tubercle and we agreed this end here would be the acromial end on the other side of course we agreed that this is your sternal facet <coughs> And right here, also on the inferior surface, we will have a costal tuberosity. Costal tuberosity. These are the features we need to remember for the clavicle. Uh, we also need to remember that the clavicle is one of those bones that is not uh, ossified by endochondrial ossification. If I am to go to the next bone, which is a flat bone, we call that the scapula, we will have uh, a triangular shaped bone that has a medial border, a medial border here, apologize, medial border, a lateral border, and a superior border. Um, it has two angles. Um, we have the inferior angle and we have the superior angle. We're looking here at the anterior aspect of your scapula will have a fairly large fossa here. We'll call it subscapular fossa. And the very important big muscle here takes origin called subscapularis muscle. And the subscapularis muscle that originates here takes an insertion into the lesser tubercle of your humerus, as we will see later on. If we look closely to the upper border, you will see it's incomplete. It has a notch here. We'll call that suprascapular notch. Other muscles that attach here, since we are talking about muscle attachment, will be along the vertebral border of your scapula. You will have an insertion for important muscle in punching or in boxing. We call that serratus anterior muscle, serratus anterior muscle. If we look here at this complicated, seemingly complicated structure, we'll see an important process here called coracoid process that looks like a finger, a pinky finger sticking out. The coracoid process is a site of, site of attachment for many ligaments, also many three muscles to be exact. Two muscles are originated at um, the coracoid process. One muscle called coracobrachialis muscle, and the other one is the short head of your biceps brachii muscle. Both of them <coughs> are originated from your coracoid process. There is a third muscle that attach, but attaches here, but it's not an origin, it's rather an insertion and it's the insertion point for your pectoralis minor muscle. It goes to the coracoid process. If we look here at the lateral aspect, we will see the glenoid fossa, the glenoid fossa, which together with the head of the humerus gives you uh, your shoulder joint that is a, a, a ball and a socket type, a ball and a socket type of, um, of joint. The glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity has a tubercle above it 
and another one below it or roughening in the bone. We'll call the tubercle above it supraglenoid tubercle and the one below infraglenoid tubercle. If you remember from the muscle lecture, the supraglenoid tubercle will give you the origin point for the long head of your biceps brachii and the infraglenoid tubercle will give you the origin point for your triceps, for the long head of your triceps muscle. Back again here to the scapula itself, we agreed this is the anterior surface and this is your subscapular fossa. If I am to flip it and look at the posterior aspect of your scapula, we will see here that the scapula, the posterior aspect, got divided by what we call the spine, the spine of the scapula, into below the spine and above the spine. The area here lying underneath or inferior to the spine, <coughs> we'll call that infraspinatus, infraspinous fossa. Uh, the area on above the spine, we'll call that supraspinous fossa. The supraspinous fossa will give you the origin for an important muscle called supraspinatus muscle. And the one below here will have uh, the origin for another important muscle called infraspinatus muscle. Infraspinous fossa, infraspinatus, supraspinous fossa will give you supraspinatus. If we look at um, the superior angle here, we will have an insertion for a muscle at around this angle. Uh, the muscle is called levator scapulae. We'll have an insertion here around the vertebral border on the posterior aspect of the vertebral border in this area here for a muscle called rhomboid minor. And down here you will have an insertion for a third muscle called rhomboid major muscle rhomboid major muscle. Down here we'll have an origin, a very small origin of a muscle that passes by and picks up an origin from here as it passes from the inferior angle, the posterior surface of the inferior angle. The muscle is called latissimus dorsi, latissimus dorsi. Right next to it we will have an origin for a muscle called teres major and above it we will have another origin for a smaller muscle called teres minor muscle. Teres minor and teres major and here we'll have a small origin for what we call latissimus dorsi. The insertion here for the rhomboid major, rhomboid minor and levator scapulae. Let's talk a little bit about our spine. As you can see the spine will continue as more or less a rectangular process, that rectangular process we called the acromion. The acromion. Um, this part here will give you the origin for part of the origin of your deltoid muscle, whereas this side will give you part of the insertion for your trapezius muscle on the spine and on the acromion process. All right? So let's take a small break and then when we come back then we will start with our humerus then we will go into the bones of your forearm the radius and the ulna and then the bones of the hand so we'll see you then